In this part, we're going to be talking about mixing and some more advanced mixing techniques uh, to get your song sounding uh, as good as it can. And uh, so let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, a new kind of track called a master fader. And uh, let's create one of these tracks. Uh, if you remember, the way we do that is we go up to the track menu and hit new, or we, uh, for, for the hotkeys, you press shift apple n. That brings up our new tracks dialog box. This time, we're going to create a, instead of an audio track, a master fader. And we want it to be stereo uh, because we have, uh, we have panning going on in our session. So one stereo master fader in samples and click create. And there it is. It gives us uh, our, our master fader. Now, this master fader uh, is basically a fader, uh, just like a master on a, on a regular mixer. That's going to turn uh, turn. Every, it's going to affect all the tracks. Um, so if I if I play my song uh, my song here, and I turn my master all the way down, you can't hear anything. And uh, so uh, this is a this is a really cool thing because you can do uh, master limiting. You can do master EQ. Uh, let's let's do that real quick. Let's put let's put a a plug in on here. Uh, you can put plugins on this master fader just like you can on a regular audio track. Let's go to uh, to an EQ and do this uh, SSL EQ here. This is a plugin from Waves. It emulates a uh, SSL console EQ. So if I uh, if I hit uh, if I hit play here. As I'm turning up that high shelf there, you can hear that it's affecting the drum, uh, the drum loop track as well as the acoustic track. Um, so this is a really cool, uh, this is a really cool feature. If you want to, um, uh, you know, if you want to do some overall EQ or some overall limiting or uh, or or whatever, and it's a really powerful feature and a good thing to know when you're mixing. <coughs> All right. All right, now we're going to talk about aux tracks. Uh, aux tracks are another kind of track uh, that you can use inside of Pro Tools, and you can do a lot of different routing and, and things like that. But I'm going to show you uh, a couple uses uh, that I have for aux tracks. And so let's create, uh, let's create a few of them. Go up to Track, New, and instead of Audio Track or Master Fader, we're going to do Aux Input. And we'll do Stereo. We'll just do one for now. Now, one of the ways I use these aux tracks is for uh, time-based effects like delays and reverbs. And this is the way you would use them on a traditional analog console. Um, I'm going to use this one for a reverb. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, double-click this track name and call it Verb. Hit Enter. Um, so since I want this, tra this aux track to be a reverb, I'm going to go up to the top uh, at the insert here, and I'm going to pick out a reverb. Go to reverb. I'll do this uh, R verb. So I'm just going to keep it, uh, keep it on the default setting there. It's just a hall. So now this aux track has a verb on it, but how do we get the audio into that verb. You get it there uh, through what's called a send. Now, this is a, this is a new thing we haven't gone over yet, uh, and this will be, be great. First of all, we're going to set the input to our aux track, this verb track that we created. Up here where it says no input, right now there's just uh, there's no input. Uh, but if we select this, instead of interface, now, uh, this, this interface, that refers to, the, of course, the back of the, my 002 unit that I, that I have. And these are all the inputs that are, that are from the back of it. But you can also select bus. Now, these are basically just internal. Uh, uh, this is internal routing inside of Pro Tools. So I'll sh we'll, you'll see how we can use this in a second. I'm going to put this input to bus 1 and 2. So click that. Now you can see the input is 
bus one and two. So now, any, any track that has a, has, is sending anything to bus one and two is going to be coming to this verb. So the way we use this is, let's say I want some verb on my first acoustic track here. I'm going to go up under the inserts here in this light gray area. This is, this is your sends area. And it looks just like the inserts uh, area except it's light gray. If you, if you click on uh, the top selector here, I want, I want to select that same bus that I assigned uh, the input to the aux track, bus 1 and 2. So now I have, I have uh, and that, that brings up this little fader over on the right side of the screen here. Uh, now that acoustic track has a separate fader, and this fader is just for sending to that reverb. So, so this is really cool because I have my, uh, my, my normal volume level, which is just dry, no reverb. And then I have my send level here, which comes up on this separate fader. And I can turn this up or down. And uh, let's solo this track. I'll, I'll solo the verb as well so we can hear it. Uh, and I'll, I'll have it all the way down, then I'll bring it up so you can hear the, you can hear the reverb. And as you can see, you can just dial in the, you know, just the right uh, amount of reverb uh, for that track. And of course, you can do that across multiple tracks. I could put that on my drums if I wanted some different reverb or more reverb on my drums or whatever. Um, and here's a little tip as well. I'm going to X out of this. If you go over here to where, where I'm sending to bus one and two uh, on my acoustic track here, if I hold down the Apple key and I and I click on this little arrow here, that'll give me a little miniature fader uh, right up there in the track. So I don't have to have a set, you know, I, I, I can be viewing it all the time, which is really cool. And then if I, if I uh, Apple click on that again, I can go back and I can view my assignments. So it's viewing all of my sends and you can be sending to you know, multiple verbs, you can, you can do whatever you want with these sends. There's a lot of different applications. But I, I like having it with this, if you Apple click on that arrow um, in this send view. And as you can, we'll listen one more time. I can just control the amount of reverb with that fader. And that's a really cool feature of aux tracks. Now, that's, uh, that's one of the main ways I use uh, aux tracks. Another way is um, if I have a group of, uh, of things like, uh, let's say, a, a group of drums or, or, uh, or, or a group of whatever, and I want to be able to, um, uh, to control that group with just one fader, obviously one way you can do that is by grouping the entire, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole group of drums and, and, and you can do it that way. But I, I find that it, uh, if you do it with an aux track, it's, that's a cool way of doing it as well.